Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming to my talk. My name is Roger, and I'm a research scientist in Autodesk AI Lab. So first of all, I want to thank Anyscale for inviting me. It's really excited to share some works from Autodesk Research. Today, I want to talk about distributed reinforcement learning for robotic assembly. It will cover three projects that we've done in Autodesk Research, their Project Touch, Dynamic Experience Replay, and Distributed Recurrent DDPG. Before I jump into those projects, I want to give a brief introduction of Autodesk and the AI Lab. So Autodesk builds software that helps people imagine, design, and make a better world. Autodesk makes software for architecture, engineering, construction, manufacturing, and media and entertainment industries. For the AI lab, we currently have 15 people locating in three different locations, San Francisco, the US, Toronto, Canada, and London, UK, and it will still keep growing. So in Autodesk AI research, we focus on three areas geometry and geometric deep learning, semantics, inference and reasoning, and simulation control. The three projects I will share today fall into the simulation control area. This area includes topics like surrogate modeling, system simulation like control systems, but also things like how people behave in buildings and other environments, and also agent-based and robotic simulations and reinforcement learning. So for the topic of today, the distributed reinforcement learning for robotic assembly, we started by asking this question, can the robot learn how to assemble timber joints based on real-time force torque feedback? To answer this question, we did project touch and the vision is to automate the building of free-form timber frame structures like showing up here using robots and composed of tight-fitting timber joints where the force is needed for insertion and the misalignment is unavoidable due to material deflection as well as torrent stack-up. So in the project touch, the goal is to learn a robot controller that assembles tight fitting timber joints. And the, the image showing up on the right shows the spatial relationship of the robot gripper and the timber members. The observation spaces include torque force feedback and also the member poles in total of 13 dimensions. And the actions are velocity command at control poles. So to train this, our reinforcement learning agent, we started by using Apex DDPG implemented by Ray. And basically Apex DDPG is a distributed RL algorithm that has multiple, a uh, that has multiple actor networks in parallel that each of them with an environment instance. And they collect data and send the data to the replay buffer. And also it has one learner network that samples experience from the replay buffer and updates priorities and also parameters. And for the replay buffer, it's a prioritized experience replay so that it will prioritize transitions in the replay buffer based on how important they are. And based on Apex DDPG, we added a module in Ray so that Apex DDPG can save human demonstrations in Ray play buffer. And in this project, we use joystickers to control a virtual robot in the simulation to collect human demonstrations. Specifically, uh, our human demonstration module has three features. First, the demonstrations were inserted before training starts. And those demonstrations permanently stay in the replay buffer, meaning that they will never be replaced by new transitions. 
And last, those transitions always have the highest priorities. So we train our agents in the PyBullet simulation entirely, and then we deploy the trained policy on the real robots. And this video shows we deploy the policy of the lab joint task on the real robot. As you can see from the video, this method works well at the insertion of a 75 degree single lab joint. And also works well on a 60 degree single lab joint. But it failed in a 45 degree single lab joint. So that one challenge we find from this project is that human demonstrations could be misleading sometimes, especially in torque force, tight fit assembly tasks. And one of the reasons is that in the simulation, human demonstrators only have the vision feedback to control and perform the task. However, when the robot performing tasks, either in the simulation or in the real world, they don't have vision feedback. They only have haptic feedback to perform the tasks. So there's a misalignment between real transitions that from the robot and demonstrations collected by humans. So then we ask this next question, can we use demonstrations collected from haptic feedback as the demonstrations in the replay buffer. And that resulted in the second project, dynamic experience replay. The core idea is that robots learn from each other's successful experience. So that it's like augmenting human demonstrations with successful transitions generated by our agents during training. And it can be seen as oversampling the underrepresented class in the imbalanced data set in supervised learning. This work has been published in 2019 conference on robot learning. So to start with this experiment, we proposed four different buffer structures for our study. And we have number one, not using human dem demonstrations at all. And number two, randomly picking one human demonstration and inserting that demonstration into all the buffers. And number three, inserting all the human demonstrations to each buffer. And number four, each buffer randomly picking a single human demonstration. And here's our system diagram. As you can see, it's similar to Apex DB DDPG, but instead of one replay buffer, we have multiple replay buffers. And before training, the replay buffers are initialized based on the chosen buffer structure. During the training, each virtual robot interacts with its own environment to collect data. And once a successful episode occurs, it will be saved in storage. Each buffer period periodically and independently samples one successful transition from storage and saves it in the demonstration zone in their buffer, so that human demonstrations will be gradually replaced by robot demonstrations. Again, uh, we build our system on top of Ray's implementation of Apex DDPG. So we compare our algorithm with Apex DDPG on two assembly tasks, pack and hole and lap joint. Here are the results from the pack and hole task. In the beginning, both two agents just like randomly explore the space. In the middle of the training, our method has figured out the general goal and reached a successful rate of 58%, while the vanilla Apex DDPG is still exploring. By the end of the training, our method has reached a successful rate of 91%, while the pure Apex DDPG only has got to 58%. And here are the plots to show the comparative results on four different buffer structures of the packing hole task. So with DER, it can largely improve the trading efficiency on three out of four buffer structures, like the one in no human demos, 
one shot in all buffers and all shots in all buffers. And here are the results of the lab drawing task. Similarly with DER, it has better performance on two buffer structures, no human demos, and all shots in all buffers. So in project touch and dynamic experience replay, both of them require post information to be available in the observation spaces. In many current successful examples of RL in assembly tasks that require observation states to be fully observable to perform complex real world control tasks. And in order to do that, it requires additional equipment like a motion tracking, like a motion tracking system. But it is unrealistic to expect a motion capture or another tracking system and the assembly construction site, like showing up in the image, because they are too expensive and hard to scale. So therefore, that leads to another question we want to explore, which is, can we only use torque force readings from the end effector as the, as the observations? Because we only use partial observation, it's a topic about robot, robotic assembly with partial observability. And the goal of this research is to develop an algorithm to solve partial observable robotic assembly tasks in the continuous action domain with torque force sensing being the only observation. Namely, that we don't need any external systems to provide velocity or pulse information, which are usually used in the observation. The robot with its own onboard sensors can make decisions based on partial knowledge about the environment. So to solve this problem, we propose this algorithm called Recurrent Distributed DDPG, short for RD2. So based on Apex DDPG, RD2 adds recurrency to both actor and critique network and their target networks so that the RL agent can have memories for previous states and actions which can improve its performance in partial observable tasks. However, we find out that by only adding the recurrency cannot achieve a stable training. Therefore, we also develop another two techniques to stabilize the training. First, we design a dynamic mechanism to overlap the last two sequences in each episode. As you know, in the replay, uh, in the replay buffer, we store the fixed length sequence of transitions that each sequence contains M transitions. We also make sure the adjacent sequence overlap by M by two time steps and the batches of sequences never cross the episode boundary because the length of the episodes in our assembly tasks varies, we then use this dynamic mechanism to allow the last overlap in each episode to be a variable between m by two and m minus one. Specifically, the last overlap is calculated as in the formula one. And we also create a two level prioritized experience replay. Basically, we use absolute and step TD arrows as the priorities for transitions, and they use the formula two to calculate priorities for sequences, where delta is a list of TD arrows in one sequence. And for each transition in a sequence, we correct the BIOS use important sampling weights as shown in formula three on each transition and normalize the weights. So therefore we have priorities for for the transitions and also we have priorities for sequences and they are used for different purposes. And we found out that those two methods can largely improve the stability of training. To train the RD2 agents, we design a lab joint environment in PyBullet to evaluate RD2 and compare with another two state of art algorithms. The environment consists of two Frankapanda robot arms, each of which holds a member of the joint, and the two members are perpendicular to each other by default. One arm is fixed, as shown on the left, and keeping the joint member static. The other arm moves the other joint members to complete the joint. 
and we design eight different tasks in the environment with varying complexity, as shown on the table here. By setting the fixed arm on different initial poses, so the joint member on the fixed arm either has an angular offset or a linear offset from its default pose. In general, the larger the offset, or the more excess are involved, the more difficult it is to train. Uh, the table up here shows the details of each task. We present these tasks because harder tasks result in failure among all three algorithms and hence are not meaningful. So we compare our, our, our RD2 with another two state of art algorithms, APEX DDPG and PPO with RSTM. And as you can see in the chart, our algorithm, which are in the blue dots and the blue area, has the best performance across all tasks. I've only shown four results here, but also it has the best performance in other four tasks. And in some hard tasks, like the one on the upper right, it's a eight degree angular offset around X axis. RD2 is the only algorithm can solve this task. And at last, we evaluate how well the trained policies adapt to new situations. We specifically consider two types of situations. One is initial offsets, which are initial positions and initial orientations that divide from those in trainings. The other is a physical noise in simulation, such as fork towards sensor noise and the inaccuracy in friction modeling. We use two trend policies and run 20 rollouts for each case. So as you can see here from the video that our trend policy adapt well to various initial poses. And also it works well as physical noise injected in simulation. Here are the results of the evaluations of initial position offset, angular offset, and physical noise. As shown in the first row on the left, our policy adapts well to linear offsets in three axes. It gets a 100% success, successful rate on both the five millimeter and 10 millimeter offset tasks. Although because 10 millimeters on all axes is not a small misalignment, the mean reward to the task is lower. As shown on the right chart in the first row, our trend policy adapts well to isolated and small angular offsets, such as five degrees around Y and two degrees around Z, with successful rate both and, and 100%. When there's an offset around two or more axes, the mean reward is lower and the successful rate reduces to 55%. For the first torque observation, we add zero mean Gaussian noise with standard deviation of 50% and 80% of nominal fork towards value during evaluation. As shown in the second row, our trend policy adapts well to the 50% standard deviation with successful rate at 90%. As the fork towards noise standard deviation increases to 80%, the mean reward of the policy lowers and its successful rates reduce to 50%. For the friction parameter, we add zero mean Gaussian noises with standard deviation of 100% of the nominal friction value during evaluation. As shown in the second row here, the trend policy adapts well by maintaining similar mean reward to that without any noise and having slightly lower successful rate and 80%. When both types of noise are combined, the successful rate and the mean reward slightly lowered. So as you can see that our algorithm RD2 can solve some partially observable assembly tasks that neither state-of-art algorithms cannot solve. And also it adapts well in different simulations with different physical conditions or different initial poses. Here's a quick recap of the three projects I just talked about. So in the project touch, we demonstrate that robots can learn to assemble timber joints 
based on real-time force torque feedback with human demonstrations. In dynamic experiments we play, we use successful robotic transitions to replace human demonstrations to have more accurate demonstrations in torque force tight fitting assembly tasks. In the distributed recurrent DDPG, we design RD2 to solve partially observable assembly tasks that only the torque force readings from the NA factor are used as observations and it outperform another state of art algorithms in some, assen in, in some uh, assembly tasks. And last, I want to thank Mike Haley, Tony Acoustis, and Aaron Brander for budgetary support. I want to thank Hui Li and Nick Code for collaborating these projects. And also I want to thank Richard Lau and Eric Liang for their technical support for the Ray development. Again, thank you so much for watching my talk. Please let me know if you have any questions.